Thank you for joining us today for today's virtual project meeting was hosted by the Washtenaw County Road Commission. Uh, my name is Callie and this is Emily here and we'll be your meeting host today. Um, so here's the agenda for today. We will go over a little bit of housekeeping um, just before the presentation and then the presentation will get kick uh, started and then after that we'll go to the Q&A. Um, so today's host or our presenters will be Michelle Ford. She's our project manager and she is really going to be your main contact here for the project of the Barker Road resurfacing project. Um, and then we also have Aaron Burkholz, um, the senior project manager, and um, he is also here for support and to be another contact for this project. Um, so your meeting audio and video is being recorded and will be posted to our project webpage on wcroads.org in the next day or two. Um, after the presentation, you will be asked to virtually raise your hand during Q&A. Um, I will provide instruction at that time on how to do this from either your computer, the Zoom app, or your touchtone phone. Um, the chat feature is enabled for this meeting. So if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to go ahead and put those in the chat and we will discuss it um, during the Q&A period. You can find the chat window at the bottom of your screen. Um, and so with that, we will turn it over to Michelle and we'll get the presentation started. All right, Callie, thank you very much. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We're gonna be talking about the resurfacing project that we have on Barker Road. So the next slide. All right, so the area that we're talking about is uh, just east of Kearney Road. There, uh, the, there it's gravel and it's right where the pavement starts. So we're gonna be starting, um, it's just west of the Whitmore Lake Elementary School, going all the way to the east to Jennings Road. And uh, not, not past uh, Jennings Road though. Okay, next one. So our current condition is pretty poor. I'm sure anyone who drives that road knows that the pavement has reached the end of its life. So um, we felt that this road required more than just a simple mill and fill. So we are doing um, uh, a more extensive treatment to get you a, a really good surface when we're all finished. Allie? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pulverize and resurface the road. And I have some slides that'll kind of take you through that step-by-step. Step. In the process of doing that, we're gonna widen the road a little bit to include six foot shoulders on both sides. Now those are not gonna be fully paved shoulders. They'll be partially paved. And then they'll also be about a four foot of paved shoulder and two foot of aggregate shoulder on each side. We're going to, um, install a new pedestrian crosswalk and I'll show you where that's going to go. And then we do have to replace um, a culvert that goes across the road that's in um, some poor condition, but we're just replacing it in kind. Um, we'll do sidewalk openings here and there as needed. Now, as far as the widening goes, um, we're holding the road pretty much on the south side and it'll be widened to the north as necessary. Some places it's already pretty wide, but if we need a little bit more surface, we're gonna do that on the north side of the road. So next slide. So when we pulverize the surface, we go in with a big machine and they kind of grind it up and it takes all of the existing asphalt and it goes down you know, a few inches into the material that's underneath and grinds them up all together. And then that's gonna become our new base material. So if you imagine that we're leaving the current surface. So the whole thing is gonna be fluffed up just a little bit because we have that current surface pulverized, we'll compact it down and then we're gonna pave on top of that. So this kind of shows you what it's gonna look like um, as it's being pulverized. Next. Then what we do, if we have anything that needs to be cut across in the road, now's the time to do it. So you can see here, just east of Turquoise Drive, there's an existing culvert where the little red line is on that picture, that aerial. And um, 
we're going to have to cut into the road. So the other picture here is just kind of an example of what we need to do. You have to cut all the way across the road. So that will be one of those times where the road will not be available to traverse the entire thing. You'll have to come from the east or the west and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I just wanted you to know we're gonna be cutting a big hole in the road, putting a new culvert in. It'll be a little bit longer than the one that's there now due to our widening, but um, we'll get that all done at this point after the pulverization is complete. Next. We'll fill in that hole and then they're um, gonna make sure everything is compacted as well as it, as it has to be. And then they're gonna put asphalt pavement down. This shows um, paving the, um, the leveling course, which is our first course of asphalt over a pulverized surface. So next slide. Then what we do is write down that middle joint. When you're driving around, sometimes you'll see between the lane lines that that joint is a, a failure point for us. That's because water can get in there and stuff. So we have started using this substance called void reducing asphalt membrane. And it's just um, something that gets sprayed on. And then as we pave on top of it, it, it activates and kind of bubbles up in between that joint to seal it off. And it helps us get a lot longer life out of that joint. And hopefully we won't have to go in there and do any repairs on that. So I just wanted to show you that if you see it and you're like, what on earth is that? It's, that's our VRAM as we call it to help seal up that joint. Next, once we get that on, we're gonna pave the top course on. So this is just showing if you see um, on the right side of uh, where the asphalt went down, you can see kind of the little uh, line for the VRAM as well um, underneath there. So we're gonna put um, about uh, three inches of asphalt back on top of our pulverized surface. Next. And then, uh, then we gotta put the pavement markings back on. Those will come and get sprayed by uh, the pavement marking contractor. Next. We do have a couple pedestrian crosswalks. This is an existing crosswalk over by the school. So we're, we're calling this a refresh because we're gonna keep this, but we are going to, it'll be repainted. The sidewalk leading up to it on either side is going to be replaced. Um, making sure that it's at least five feet wide, I believe on the north side of the road, it's uh, slightly narrower than that. So we're gonna make sure that that's all compliant and there'll be paint and some new signs. Um, just to, it, it will stay as is as far as they're not going to be any flashing beacons or anything like that. It'll just have the same type of signage that it has now. Next. Now we're gonna add a new pedestrian crosswalk. This is gonna be right near the entrance of Northfield Estates. So it's just to the west of Opal Lane and Wildwood Lake Drive. And so I put a little rendering there on the right-hand side, you can see kind of where it's gonna get drawn in. This will be the same as the other. It'll be painted. It'll have um, uh, you know, approaches on either side with the concrete. It'll have signs, but there's not going to be any uh, lighting. There won't be any flashing beacons or anything like that. It'll just be painted. On the, uh, on the asphalt. Next. And then we'll have our final product, which will be a much nicer surface than we currently have out at Barker Road. You can see here, this one has probably, we'll have a little bit wider shoulder than this picture shows. Like I said, it'll be about a four foot paved shoulder and then the two foot of aggregate off to the side there. Next. So this project is part of a larger project that we have bundled together. Um, we're also, this particular contract also has uh, a portion of Packard Road right near the city of Ann Arbor, but our uh, cost for this part of it, just the Parker Road, our estimated cost is around $800,000. So you see it is pretty pricey to make these um, changes on the roadways. And this is funding funded using uh, federal funds and 
the road commission's allocation of Michigan transportation funds. And that's at an approximately an 80-20 split, 80-20 federal funds and 20% um, federal, I mean, sorry, uh, Michigan transportation funds. Next. So how is this gonna impact you? So the road's gonna be a closed for approximately four weeks. And we anticipate that to begin after completion of the school year. Well, you know, that's a pretty big window. When do you think? So today, our schedule is weather permitting, dependent on weather, supply chain, unexpected utility conflicts and contractor scheduling, as we put here, mostly weather at this point. Uh, we anticipate this to start next week. We plan to close the road on June 13th with all other uh, things you know, working out. Now there is some rain in the forecast this week. I will tell you that sometimes that delays the contractor on other jobs, which could you know, may push them a little bit on this one. But if all things go as planned right now, we plan to start this next week. I, wait, the 13th, yeah, that is next week. <laughs> next week, yes. Yeah. Okay, so there will be a posted detour that goes on either side. You can see here that it, you know, goes out um, uh, Barker Road to the west, Old Hamburg Road, Sheldon Road, Hall Road, Eight Mile Road, Main Street. Makes a loop up there um, to go around. I do understand that some of these are uh, gravel roads. Um, that's just the way it is because of what we have out in this area. Um, but hopefully it won't be too big of an inconvenience for you. Um, we really do need to close the road for the safety of our uh, workers and also to make this a much more efficient process, especially with pulverizing the road. There's really no way to do that partial width. Um, so we do need to close the entire road. So next. Hey, Michelle, we're going to go back. I, I kind of prematurely jumped to the detour before letting you get to the. Um, if you would just duration. talk about, yeah, the duration of the closure, Michelle. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I said that. So it'll be about four weeks and it'll be closed to through through traffic um, throughout that time. And I have a slide in a little bit to show you what that means for the local traffic involved. Yeah, and there and and Kelly, if you'd go back to that slide, just to reinforce uh, that the the project schedule is is very fluid. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, will affect a road construction project schedule. Michelle mentioned the weather, and that can affect not only the schedule on our project, the project we're discussing this morning on Barker Road, but can it can affect the contractor and subcontractor schedules on other projects. So um, again, the, the construction schedule tends to be fluid on a road project. Um, we unfortunately are not uh, uh, separated from the supply chain issues. And that's almost becoming a, a cliche where it comes up so much for each of us every day, but we do experience supply chain issues with some of the materials that we need to use to build roads. Now we don't foresee that for this particular project with the materials we're using here, but that's ever changing. So that's something else that can have an influence on the schedule. Um, unexpected utility conflicts. Um, the Road Commission staff, uh, including Michelle, have spent a great deal of time working to identify in as much as they're able all the utilities that are out on this project. But it is not uncommon for us to begin our work and to discover um, an unidentified utility. And then we have to follow a process to uh, accurately identify the utility owner. Potentially the utility has to be relocated. We can't simply tear a utility out of the ground because it's in our way. Um, that would cause issue for a lot of people. Um, so again, utilities can cause conflicts and delays. And then I mentioned before contractor scheduling. Uh, the, the prime contractor for this project is Cadillac Asphalt. We've worked with Cadillac many times in the past. We have a good working relationship with them, but Cadillac works on a variety of projects beyond Washtenaw County. 
And so uh, their schedules can be affected on other projects, which in turn start to influence our projects. So again, there's a I'm sorry that that's such an unclear answer on the schedule, but that's the reality of what we work with on a daily basis. So go ahead, Michelle. Thank you so much for that, Aaron, for going into that detail, because that's you're absolutely uh, spot on with all that. So we can probably go on to uh, after the detour. So there's our detour. So for there's a lot of uh, residential homes in this area. We do have a school things like that. So I put this slide together to hopefully make it more clear to you what the road closure means. So the purple lines are on the east and west side of the project of the limits. That's about where the pulverization is going to take place and that the road is going to be closed. And what that means is local traffic only. If you live in that area, you will get access throughout the project. So don't fear that you won't be able to get to your house. So you will have access throughout. However, we do not want cut through traffic coming through. We wanna keep the traffic to an absolute minimum. And another way to help us keep the traffic to a minimum is to restrict access for those who have an alternate means of getting to their, um, to their areas. So, um, the Northfield Estates, for instance, um, we're going to close those red lines. Those are total closures. There will be no access from Barker Road. So Northfield Estates, you will be able to access from eight mile road only. So you're going to have to go around a little bit during this closure, but there is an alternate access point. And anyone who's on any of those roads within that kind of um, orangish uh, rectangle there. As far as the folks down um, in the blue square area, there's access from Jennings Road off of that to go through. So uh, Wildwood Lake Drive there is going to be closed completely at Barker Road, total no, a road closure with no traffic going through. Those folks really need to enter from Jennings Road. And then over at the school, in green there, I do know that there are staff who are gonna be working throughout the summer. There are also um, some classes going on. Uh, we understand that. We're gonna ask that those folks come from the West only, come from Kearney Road. Once again, I said, I know that some of that is on um, unpaved roads. I apologize for that, but that's the access that we have. Um, but the, this really does help out our contractor and uh, the safety of the workers, the efficiency of the work. Now, there are a bunch of people who are not within those um, rectangles that are on the page. So I know that you're gonna have to be coming through in order to access your, your home or business. So with that, I would ask that you enter whatever side is the closest to you with the uh, caveat that you will be subject to direction by the contractor. For instance, we have that culvert that we're replacing. So the road is gonna be cut. At that time, definitely everyone to the east needs to come from the east. Everyone from the you know, west of that's gonna need to come from the west. Typically those cuts do not last very long. That'd be you know, a couple of days uh, that that will be um, inaccessible. But uh, we, we just want to keep it to an absolute minimum. Uh, there could be uh, flaggers, you know, people out there with flagging equipment to help you get through. Understand that this is an active construction zone. Um, we don't want any damage to your vehicles. We don't want anyone to be in an unsafe situation. So please pay attention to the contractor on site. And if they're giving you some sort of direction of, you know, please go this way or that way, that you um, listen to them and do what they would like because they're looking out for your safety and for the protection of your you and your vehicle as well. Um, Aaron, do you have anything to add on that? No, you, you've made a, a, a great summary, Michelle, and, and provided the background and expressed our thought going into this that we are very conscious of um, the uh, challenges, the complications, the frustration that this can introduce for motorists and for people who live along this segment of Barker Road. 
uh, but that ultimately we make these decisions to promote the safety of the workforce that's on site um, and to, to work as quickly and safely and efficiently as we can to complete the project. And, and it really helps to keep uh, those motorists out of that work zone uh, for those reasons. And, and uh, so we appreciate everyone's patience with the effort. Okay, next. All right, so we have we have begun to put this on pretty much all of our public information meetings that have a road closure. And unfortunately, the reason that we have to include this is because we're experiencing a fairly large volume of folks who have decided that um, road closures don't apply to them. And they have gone into our, our road closures sometimes uh, resulting in damage to their vehicles, sometimes resulting in damage to um, things that we have placed. We've uh, had to replace whole sections of roadway that were just you know, placed because of damage caused by an errant motorist not obeying the closure signs. So um, like I said, if it's, if it's the hard closures that I had the red lines on that page, please obey those, do not go through them. If it's the, the road closure for no through traffic, we ask that you obey that as well and that only residents needing to get to and from their homes or folks needing to get to a business or the school enter into that closure area. Next. All right, so this um, this comes off of our uh, website and it just gives you an idea of some of the other work that we have going on this year in this area. And you can see that nothing is super close to us. There is some chip seal work going on at Seven Mile. I believe that's already completed, um, at least the chip seal portion. I don't know, no, not done? <laughs> no, it's not done yet. Um, okay, all still, right. Yeah, they're still further south in the county. Okay, so that's coming. Yeah, um, it's coming though. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, you know a little bit off to the east of where we'll be. And so this just gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the things that'll be going on in the similar area. Next. Uh, something oh, else that I'll mention on that slide, Michelle, is uh, considering the, the group that we're speaking with this morning, uh, some of them may travel North Territorial Road uh, to the west of Whitmore Lake Road. And something they should keep in mind is right now we're scheduled to close North Territorial Road uh, between Whitmore Lake Road going to the west to Webster Church Road. Uh, that's going to be closed to through traffic uh, later this week. Uh, that's scheduled for Wednesday, June 8th through Friday, June 10th. Uh, we're going to have our operations crews, our operations department crews, there on that segment of North Territorial Road doing work to prepare for a chip seal project thereafter. So again, just considering uh, the, the group of uh, motorists and residents that we're speaking with this morning, definitely something for some people to keep in mind in their travels. Okay, thank you. So you can visit our project page in just a minute. Callie's going to explain to you how to do that. And certainly if you have any questions or any concerns throughout this process, um, my information is here. I think it's gonna come up again later. You can, it's also on this project page that they're gonna show you um, how to deal with that. You can give me a call or email me and I will get back to you and hopefully be able to address any of your questions or concerns. Next. All Thanks, right, Shelly. Yeah, thank you, Michelle and Aaron. Um, at this point, I can show you how to get to the project page um, and how you can receive project updates or subscribe to receive project updates, as well as just kind of give you a little bit of a lay of the land for um, other things that you can do. Um, okay. So our website here is wcroads.org. Um, and right here, you, you have a lot of different things that you can do. Um, you can see down here, we've got different road work advisories, project updates, um, different meetings that we have going on. But to get to the project update or project page, you would go up to here to road work and construction. 
Um, and then there is a drop down menu. You'll click on current projects. And then this has um, a really cool map that we'll download here in just a second. Um, and then we'll go up here. It's right at the north end of the county to Barker Road. You just click on it and hit more info. And the project page will load here. Um, you can see that we've got the location of the project, um, when it's all of the updates that we have, when it's going to begin, what kind of work is going on, the impact to traffic. Um, Michelle's contact info is also right here on the project page. If you um, don't have anything to write with and need to see it again, um, that is available there. Um, and the last thing is that you can click here to receive project updates. You just need to input your email. Um, and you can subscribe to receive different updates for different townships, uh, road advisories. We have a weekly road work schedule that goes out, all of which can be subscribed just with this button here. Um, and you can also subscribe just to receive updates about Barker Road. If you don't want to hear anything else, you can just get those emails about Barker. We'll also post those, that update that when we send them out, we'll post them here on this project page too. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, so we'll go back to the... PowerPoint here. Um, so now we will open it up to Q&A. If you are viewing the meeting on your um, computer, first just to make, sorry, first make sure to click join audio, and then you can raise your hand by clicking on the participants or the reactions button at the bottom of your screen, and then the raise hand button at the bo bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you dialed in by, into the meeting by your touchtone phone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. Um, as the meeting host, I'll unmute participants with raised hands one at a time. I will announce your username or the last four digits of your phone number when it's your turn to speak. Um, and we are happy to answer as many questions as possible, but just please be respectful of each other's time. Um, if your question is answered before you are called on, you can always just lower your, lower your hand by clicking the lower hand button or redialing star nine if you're on the touch tone phone. Let's, All right, whoops, let's go to, sorry. Let's go to our question. I know we had a couple questions in chat. Yeah, so we'll start in chat. Let's scroll up here. So it looks like Walt has a question. He says, my mailbox is on the south side of the road. There is not six foot available from the current road edge. Will my mailbox have to move for the widening plan? Thank you so much for your question. So as of right now, no, if you're on the south side of the road, we don't anticipate your mailbox having to move. And that's because I think I mentioned, we're gonna be holding that south side as close as possible to where it is and widening a little bit to the north. What that does mean is it's possible on the north side that if you have a mailbox, it may move that is not a guarantee at this point, because like I said, the road is wider in some areas than others. So um, we will be widening a foot or two in some places. In other places, we really don't need to widen much at all. So it's gonna depend on where your mailbox is, if that may need to be moved. And that is something that we will be in contact with you um, if, if we do need to do it. Um, one thing that I uh, forgot to mention while we were in this is if you, Things like garbage pickup, your mail delivery, those things will all stay the same throughout the um, closure. You'll still have access to that. Um, there could be a time here or there, for instance, if they're paving right in front of your house, you know, you, you may not be able to drive over that for a half an hour or something. We will do our best to communicate with you if you're home um, to let you know that, hey, you're kind of going to be cut off here for a short period of time uh, so that if you know you have a doctor's appointment or something you need to get out that we'd give you the opportunity to leave before they pave right in front of your house something like that so um we will we will try to to keep in good communication with you but as far as Walt's question on the south side of the road it should not impact your mailbox perfect thank you michelle um, we do have a raised hand from Lori, so I'm going to go ahead and ask her to unmute. Um, you should be able to unmute yourself now, Lori. Hello? Yeah, we can Hello. hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I have a couple of questions. 
One is, are kids still going to be able to bike to get uptown or to the park or anything? So as far as biking, there's, uh, there's pretty nice sidewalks on both the north side and the south side of the road. And we do not anticipate um, impacting those sidewalks, except for a couple spots here and there. We're going to have to, um, we're going to connect into them for like our new crosswalk. And we may need to, at one point, we will, we will check them to make sure they're still compliant with the American with Disabilities Act. There's certain slopes and distances and things. There could be a little um, uh, time there that we have to do a, a, a modification of the sidewalk. But overall, we are not planning to touch those sidewalks. So if the kids are biking, they're probably going to need to stay on that sidewalk. And then they should be outside the, well outside the work zone and be fine. Okay, good. And my other question is, with the speed limit being so high through there, why is there not flashing lights at the pedestrian walks? Um, I have to say that is a traffic and safety question. I was not involved with the decision of how they decided to just sign it rather than have the flashing lights. Um, if you put your contact information in the chat, I could talk with our traffic and safety engineer and see if I can get an answer to that question for you. Okay, yeah, I was just curious because we have one by the school on Main and the speed limit is a lot lower. Yeah, yeah there's, different, there's different traffic warrants that are needed for that type of device. But yeah, like Michelle said, if you want to, um, Lori, give us your contact information in the chat, we'll share that with Michelle and, and get you some more information. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, and something else that I'll mention, and, and Lori, thank you again for the question. Um, and, and in regards to bicyclists, um, and, and it would apply to pedestrians as well, um, they wanna be very cautious as they may be uh, like crossing the work zone. If let's say someone is, is coming from Northfield Estates and they wanna walk into town, into Whitmore Lake, and they wanna get to the south side, they really are gonna wanna be conscious of crossing through the construction work zone to get to that nice sidewalk and paved trail that's along that south side of Barker Road. Um, in particular, something that can be dangerous, a couple things, the equipment itself can be dangerous. Uh, they use large equipment to do this work like bulldozers and excavators and front end loaders. Those, those pieces of equipment by their nature uh, have large blind spots. And so you never wanna be very near those pieces of equipment. Uh, you have to respect those and keep a lot of distance between yourself and those types of equipment. The other thing is the materials that we use, and in particular, hot mix asphalt. Um, when asphalt is placed, it's placed at right around like 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can be, it's very hot. And uh, you could hurt yourself uh, uh, walking on it, uh, certainly walking on it barefoot, that would burn you. But you have to consider your pets as well. If you're taking your dog for a walk, you do not want to walk your dog across freshly placed asphalt. So um, again, you have to be very conscious as a bicyclist or as a pedestrian, being very respectful of that work zone. We're fortunate here that Michelle mentions there are nice sidewalks out here in particular on that south side. There's the sidewalk and the, the paved trail that runs all the way along the south side of the road there. So that would be a safe area to walk in. Uh, but not in the road. Uh, the road is going to be a dangerous area to be in. And Aaron, I just thought of one other thing as well, um, going back to Walt's question about living on the south side of the road. This applies to both uh, the north and the south. For those particular people who have a driveway on Barker Road. So as I mentioned, when we pulverize the road, we're leaving the, the existing material is there and we're paving on top of that. So the result is the road is fluffed up a little bit, which means that your driveway is no longer going to quite match the existing grade. So what we need to do then is we're going to have to adjust your sidewalk to match that grade. And that is part of the contract for any asphalt. You're basically, you're, you're, we're going to have to most likely remove a small portion of your driveway. We have um, unpaved driveways, asphalt, and concrete driveways out there. So whatever material you currently have is what will be put back. 
So if you have an unpaved driveway, we'll have good aggregate out there put back to, you know, uh, make it nice. If you have an asphalt driveway, then we'll be paving the asphalt to make it, you know, slide it out, make it match. Unfortunately, if you have a concrete driveway, I know people are a little more sensitive to removal of a concrete driveway. We're going to have to um, take out a portion of that. It will depend on where it is. It could be 5, 10, or 15 feet back from the roadway. Um, it depends on how much they need to adjust those grades because we want to make sure that you have a nice slope on your driveway. We don't want it too steep. And so sometimes we might remove a little bit more to make sure that you have a nice smooth transition on your driveway. But I do want you to be aware that um, we probably will be removing a portion of your driveway. Once again, we'll stay in contact with you to make sure that you still maintain access to your home and all of that, but uh, I didn't want you to be surprised by that. I apologize, I didn't mention it earlier. Michelle, we've had a few questions in chat about local access. So yep. um, I've got the, yep. the chart again, here again, if you wouldn't mind going over that just one more time. Sure, so we have two different color lines here. We have the purple lines, which you're gonna see road closure signs. And what that means is really the only people that we want within that are people that need to be within that. So that's residences, people going to the school, um, there may be a business in there, something like that. We do not want through traffic. So if I have someone coming from the west and they want to get to 23, they need to go around and follow our detour. We do not want them just driving through to get them to 23 fast. So then within the closure area, the red lines there, we're gonna have a total road closure there. So no one will be able to get through that. The purple ones, you can kind of go around, either there'll be a, an, a way for you to get in there. For the red lines, there's gonna be no access. And the reason is, is because those particular roadways have alternate means of entrance. So the ones to the north there, which is mostly Northfield Estates, um, they have access from Eight Mile Road. And so they're gonna need to go around and access from Eight Mile Road and just come in from the north. In the blue over there, those folks, um, Wildwood Lake Drive accesses um, Jennings Road. So we're gonna ask that anybody within that square, that blue square there, come in from Jennings Road. The other roads in there, um, Lakewood, Turquoise, those, there isn't another way to get in, so they are gonna need to come into the closure. That includes also the people who have driveways on the road, they have no other way to get into their homes, so they can come in, but we really want to minimize any cut through traffic of folks trying to get to and from US 23. Do you think that so, covers your questions or? Yeah, just to clarify, you said turquoise. I think you meant Timbercrest. So Timbercrest will be able to access from Barker, but turquoise will not. Is that correct? You're correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Sorry about that. Okay. Perfect. Um, we do have another question in chat. Um, Walt is wondering, is the 4th of July parade route changing? It normally starts at the school and heads east. So I would say probably yes. Yeah, I would say probably yes. Certainly... I actually was not aware of that. So um, we will we will check into that, but definitely they will not be cutting through this way because the roadway will be, well, I, I the roadway will maybe still be closed. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll touch base. I think the township organizes that. So we can touch base with them and talk with them about this project. Yes. We have reached out to the township, um, but it's definitely something that we can talk to as we get closer. Right. Um, now that we have some a little bit more firmer dates, but nothing set right. in stone until we actually start, right, Michelle? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so good question, Walt. Thanks. Um, we've got another question or another raised hand from Lori, so I'll go ahead and ask her to unmute. Lori, you should be, un be able to unmute yourself. Oh, Lori, are you there? Lori, we can't hear you. We're going to uh, mute you and then we'll come back and try again in a few minutes. You might have to turn your or switch your microphone around. Let's go back to a question in chat. All right. 
Oh, this is a, a nice comment from the superintendent of Whitmore Lake Public Schools. He just messaged us in the chat. It sounds like they are moving, the school district is gonna be moving its summer classes to another building. So we have been in uh, contact with the uh, principal at that building, we'll follow up too, but it does sound like maybe that um, won't be a traffic uh, concern that we have. It sounds like they might be moving it to another building and we appreciate his kind words. He says he's very supportive of this work uh, and it is an inconvenience to them, but they are very excited about the road being resurfaced and we are too. So we'll follow up with the school on that uh, as well. Cool, there I go back here. Yeah, let's try to, let's see if Lori can. Lori, you should be able to unmute yourself. We'll try you again. You can hit it. Hmm. Lori, if you want to uh, put your question in chat, we can, uh, we'd be happy to read it out loud too, but it looks like we're having some issues with it. So we'll move on to the next question in chat. Okay. Um, I would just leave her hand raised. That's okay. All right. Um, we right. covered that one. Deanne was asking about some of the access for Wildwood Lake, but I think we're good there. We just talked about that. Mm -hmm. Russ says, thanks for all the information on repaving Barker Road starting June 13th, um, weather permitting, and, and it is going to last about four weeks. Yes, that's correct. Um, let's see. Timothy says, thank you for this meeting. We mentioned the 80-20 split funding, but there was some rework done on the culvert already. Will the residents in the area be charged again on our taxes for the repair of the culvert? We incurred costs last time it was done. I'm the treasurer of the Wildwood Lake sub, and I'm sure the residents will be asking. So um, as far as any funding, I can only address the funding that we have for this project. And it is being done as part of our, uh, our road work for the summer. Like I said, we're using some of our federal funds for that. Um, I do not believe that the township is involved in this particular project. And so at least for this particular project, I don't anticipate any increase, you know, in a tax for, for that, but I do not know what was done in the past. So I'm not sure. And, and I would venture a guess, Michelle, that possibly uh, there may have been some culvert work done through the Washtenaw County Water Resources Commission because there are some uh, county drains up in this area. And so oftentimes when there's culvert work performed as part of a drainage improvement project, uh, that will be assessed against the property owners uh, who benefit from that culvert improvement made by the Water Resources Commission. But again, uh, this project is, is a road commission project. Um, it doesn't involve any kind of a special assessment on the residents. Um, and so the, the sole sources of funding for our improvements on this project, as Michelle mentioned, would be the federal aid at 80%, and then the Michigan transportation funds that come from the road commission at 20%. So uh, the residents are not being charged for these improvements. And, and Aaron did mention the Water Resources uh, okay. Commission's office. We have uh, been in contact with them on this project because they do have county drains. We received a permit for that from them for this project. So just know that they are aware of it and we have followed, you know, the permitting requirements that they have as well. Okay, Lori, if you want to try one more time, it looks like you maybe have figured out the audio issue. If you want to try to unmute. Oh. Oh shoot, Lori, we can see that you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. So if you want to uh, send us your question in chat, uh, we'd be happy to read out loud. Sorry about that. Andrew has asked, um, those of us on Lakewood Drive, we have no other alternative. When you're pulverizing the road, what road surface will be available? Um, and we can go back to what- Say, okay, Callie, if you could go back, it kind of shows a picture of what the pulverized surface looks like. Yeah. There we go. So it's there. You see on the right hand side, that's kind of before pulverization at the end. At the left hand side, it shows it after it's pulverized. And then that will be um, compacted down. So it, it looks, when you drive on it, it looks almost like a very heavily packed unpaved road. It's kind of what it seems like as you're driving on it. So um, it's it's a pretty good surface to drive on actually it's it's not too bad um so 
hopefully that will answer your question. It, it's it's going to be kind of like driving on an on on an unpaved road. It is not the same as when we mill something and you see kind of the grooves in the roadway. That's a different process, um, and that leaves some asphalt on the road. You're just milling off the top of it. That's different. We are pulverizing all of the asphalt we have out here, mixed in with a few inches of the material that's underneath. It could be some gravel, it could be just some other sub-base material that's in there. We mix it all together to make it a nice new uh, surface for us. Perfect. Um, it looks like Pete has asked, how come the project is not going all the way to Main Street, just another one fourth of a mile and it is in just as bad, if not worse condition? Okay, so, we thought we might get this question. So the biggest thing that um, we look at when we're doing this is our budget. And honestly, we did not have the budget to go farther, but I am happy to report that I believe, Aaron, it's 2023, isn't it? That we do have that portion of Barker um, within our local millage funds and that will be resurfaced at that time. So you have to wait a little bit longer, but that is um, on the horizon in a, in a year or so. Yeah, and, and that is correct, Michelle. It's, it's, uh, it's either slated for next construction season, 2023, or the following 2024, but there are intentions to work on that piece that goes to the east of this project from basically the east side of US 23 to Main Street. Uh, certainly we recognize that road is in very poor condition and it is slated for work. Um, it's just not included as part of this project for the reason that Michelle mentioned, looking at budgetary constraints, looking at the availability of federal funds, uh, that portion of Barker Road was not included in this project. Um, Emily and I just looked at the map. It looks like that is slated for 2023 construction season. So um, it is, the light is at the end of the tunnel for that section as well. Yeah, it is a short section, but it is an expensive section to repair. So we are excited to, for next year for that one. Mm -hmm. um, so Lori asked, she was able to put her question in the chat. She said that she forgot to ask about emergency vehicles. How long will the road be closed to everyone because of the culvert? So um, the culvert work, usually they're pretty efficient with that. It's only going to be uh, a, a few days. The contractor is required to maintain access for emergency vehicles. We do keep in contact. Typically, we alert the um, emergency responders to work such as this so that they'll know which direction they need to come from if there is some sort of emergency and they need to get there. And it's not a very long period of time. And so, um, like I said, we'll make sure that they're aware and then it'll, it'll get filled in pretty quick. And one of the requirements of a contract is that they, they have to maintain access all the time for those emergency vehicles. Thanks, Michelle. Um, Deanne also asked, she said, oftentimes rush hour traffic will try to detour on Barker Road. Will the, will, sorry, excuse me. Will there be a heads up for freeway traffic? Yes, we do have advanced signing um, that is going to go in, and that includes, in this particular case, we have a permit from the Michigan Department of Transportation, MDOT, um, to put signs on the ramps of US 23, alerting people that they cannot uh, turn there for Barker Road. Um, we will do our best to keep people from making those turns. Uh, unfortunately, people do what they want sometimes, which is why we we risk the safety of our, our workers and such. But um, there will be some signage on, on US 23, and then of course, from all the approaching roads to Barker um, to let people know that they need to go, they need to follow our posted detour. Awesome, thank you. Um, so it looks like we got through all of the questions in the chat, and doesn't look like we have any raised hands. Um, I'll give you guys one last moment to, uh, for any last questions. Last call for questions, and Kelly's got up here now. We've got the access map that we kind of went through. We'll post that to the website as well, along with this meeting recording and the, the other slides, if you want to check that out. Um, Michelle and Aaron, is there anything you guys would like to add before we end things for the day? 
Uh, just for me, thank you so much for um, attending. I know that anytime we close a road, it can be um, a bit of an inconvenience for folks. We apologize for that, but uh, we are excited to get a new road surface out there for you. It's in very poor condition right now, and I think it's gonna look great when we're done. So hopefully if we can all be a little patient together, um, we'll get this in and out and get it you know, done as quickly as possible for you. And my contact information is there. Do not hesitate to call or email you. If I can't pick up the phone right then, I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you do call, um, leave a message so that I could try to get an answer to your questions. So when I call you back, I'll even know the answer to, so we won't delay things anymore. Um, but thank you again for attending. And I'm all set. Again, appreciate uh, uh, the time that uh, you have taken Michelle and, and uh, Emily and Callie in uh, providing this information to the public and appreciate everyone uh, taking the time to attend today. Uh, we hope that you found this information valuable and uh, we look forward to undertaking this project, uh, hopefully getting started next week. Awesome, thank you guys. Yeah, and we'll send out an advisory as we get a little bit even closer or a week out now, but probably midweek um, just to confirm that closure date. And then please subscribe to those product updates. We'll send out updates throughout the process so you can see how things are progressing as we um, work to resurface this road. So awesome. Well, thank you. We, we hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. And if you have any questions, like we said, don't hesitate to reach out.